Okay, so this is gonna be a quick video on a little power supply I made for my workshop. I decided to make this thing because my workshop, which is actually just a desk, is getting pretty crowded between the 3D printing stuff and the Arduino stuff. And I really didn't wanna go buy a really expensive, really big lab bench power supply. I got this little power supply from one of those cheap Chinese websites thinking I would just use it as a backup or something. But then I tested it out and it really impressed me. So I ended up using a lot more than I thought I would. Now, my original plan was to go buy a bench power supply, but they're really big and expensive, and I thought to myself, none of my projects ever require anything more than 25 volts anyway, so I might as well use this little mini guy and a laptop power supply I had lying around. But then while sitting at my desk one day, I realized it almost fit perfectly in my parts bin. So I started measuring the available space and discovered that it would still have a little bit of room left over on the side, so I decided to add this little voltmeter in the available space as well. Now, I did this because it's really tiny and I find myself needing a voltmeter really often. And digging through my drawers and space to find a multimeter is just a hassle. So I thought to myself, if I mounted one permanently in place, I wouldn't have to look for it anymore. So this little voltmeter is actually really cool. It has three wires, two of which are exclusively for power, and the third is to sense voltage. However, you can literally power it from the source you're trying to measure if it's more than three volts. To do this, we bridge the source pin and the positive input pin and then hook it up. Now, I found it wasn't super accurate with a margin of error around 5% or so, but that isn't an issue because it's just going to be used as an everyday voltmeter for measuring and verifying voltages, so a margin of error of 5% isn't too bad. Okay, so the first thing I did was measure everything and plot it in Tinkercad so I could 3D print a cover plate. This was an awful experience because nothing ever fits. Between an inaccurate ruler, inaccurate 3D printer, and just bad vision, I couldn't get any of the pieces to fit in their places. Eventually I started increasing the size of the mounting spots by 0.1mm every time until I got them to fit. This did waste a lot of time and filament, but you can't argue with the perfect fit. Then I 3D printed a high quality print with plate adhesion to stop it from going all wonky. I did this for the front and back. The front plate has a hole for the power supply, a hole for the voltmeter, and four holes for banana jacks which just sounds like a terrible innuendo. Anyway, I then mounted everything in place on a piece of cardboard to act as a support and base. I then needed to cut out some of the pieces to make sure it would all fit well, which ended up being really easy using a Dremel. Now, after a test fit, I needed to wire everything up, which was pretty easy. The ground output of the power supply gets connected to the black banana jack, and the positive output gets connected to the red one. Then the positive and source wires from the voltmeter get connected to the other red banana jack, and the ground gets connected to the black one. And then finally, I connected the output of the laptop power supply to the input with a switch breaking the connection of the ground wire so we can turn it on and off. Then I just shoved the whole thing into the parts bin and the main part was basically done. Now the last thing to do is to make some probes and alligator clips so we can plug in. Now to do this, I just cut up an old pair of multimeter probes and soldered the male side of a banana jack to them and then did the same thing with the alligator clips. This allows us to either plug in the alligator clips or the probes to supply power. And that's pretty much it. If I want to, I can plug in the probes or alligator clips into the top banana jacks to measure voltage, or into the bottom ones to deliver power. While making this, I tried to think of some really cool, interesting features for my power supply, so I started to do some research and saw a lot of really awesome DIY power supplies from the community. Have you ever made your own power supply? If so, what kind of features would you or did you include? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.